morning, church. Are we blessed today? Amen. Amen. Uh, let us open our Bible to the book of Philippians 3, verses 13 to 21. Philippians 3, verses 13 to 21. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us, then, who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point, you think differently that to God will make clear to you. Only, only let us live up to what have already attained. Join us together in following my example. Brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as I have open eyes, as I have often told you, and now, tell you again, even with tears, many leave us, many leave us enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is, is destruction. Their God is their stomach. And their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set to early, earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven but and we eagerly await a savior from there the lord jesus christ who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will make his glorious body praise be to god for the reading of this word amen so let us pray Heavenly Father, indeed, um, you are an awesome God. And you deserve our highest praise and adoration. Lord, there is no greater privilege and joy than to gain Christ and to be found in Him. We thank you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, because Jesus is our portion. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross, O God. So that by grace, through faith in Christ, we are now a child of God and have been given an eternal inheritance in Him. Thank you for the example of Paul, who pressed on for the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you that your grace is sufficient, O God, no matter what suffering we, we may have, we may face, O Lord, you are there, O God. And thank you for your pre precious promises as well. That one day we will all live in Christ. And that Lord, um, you will be with us, O God. Lord, I lift up to you, O God, even this service, O Lord. Um, I lift up to you all the people that who are standing in front, O Jesus. Thank you for their lives. And we continue to, uh, we will continue to lift up your name, O God, in this place. Lord, thank you for 2021, and we are looking forward for 2022 victorious in Christ Jesus, O Lord. To you, O God, we give all the glory and honor and praise. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, good morning, church. Good morning. Happy New Year. Advance Happy New Year to all. Happy New Year. Yes, uh, all the people attending here, the church, and over there, the Zoom. Then sa respected uh, home yung house yun. So let us continue to praise the Lord. Let's bless Amen. Him. the sanctuary praise him in the mighty heavens praise him 
forward, praise Him. Praise Him in His awesome power. Praise His great and holy name. Praise Him. Whole world praise Him. From the rising of the sun, let His praise be heard. From the east to the west and the north to south, let everything that I spread praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Let everything that I spread praise the Lord forever. Sanctuary, praise Him in the mighty heavens, praise Him, the whole earth praise Him, praise Him in His awesome power, praise His great and holy name, praise Him, the whole earth praise Him, from the Son, let his praise be heard from the east to the west and the north to south. Let everything that I spread praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Let everything that I spread praise the Lord forever. remaining for this today but uh, but the blessing of the Lord his favor is not going to end amen, amen. amen. so the Lord says in uh, number 6 the Lord bless you the Lord make his face shine upon you the Lord turn his face towards you today speak the blessing of our Lord over this church, over this country, UAE, over our country, Philippines, over our family, over our children, their children, and their children for a thousand generations. So let us bless His name, glorify the Lord.
background we just we just want to reflect on what the Lord has done in our lives so let us just take this moment just to close our eyes and just bow down before him for those who are at home you can just be in the same place where you are let no one disturb you just being reminded of how wonderful is the Lord that we serve. In those songs that we sang, it is indeed the Lord has blessed us beyond measure, beyond what we can imagine. And just take this moment for us to be grateful in everything that the Lord has done, to utter words to utter praises unto Him. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord.
we don't deserve it, oh God. Everything that you have given us. Lord, it's all by your grace. Hallelujah. Lord, we continue to honor you and praise you. You are indeed a wonderful God. Awesome. And there are words, Lord, that we cannot pick in order to describe, Lord, who you are because you are beyond everything, O oh Lord. And just to recall of everything that you have done in our lives, of every individual here in this we in charge of family and collectively as a church. Lord, it is indeed by your grace alone that we came this far as we end this year, 2021. Everyone is here, O oh Lord. And with those words that we have uttered unto you, those thanksgiving that flows from our heart, Father, we know and we believe that you are there looking down on each and every one of us. As honest, as best as we can. Lord, you know our hearts. You know our dependency, O Lord God, unto you alone. And as we look, Lord, for these uncertainties, for this coming years that is to come Lord will continue to trust you we'll continue Lord to focus on what you're going to do oh Lord God Father we just continue to acknowledge that you indeed are God who heals and yes oh Lord we continue to live unto you our brothers and our sisters we're still going through, Lord, this difficult time in their health. Continue to live unto you, Sister Erica, as we continue to remember. Father, we just know and we believe that as we pray along together, as we pass together as a family, as your body, Lord, here you are in heaven. Please, and we know that you are going to heal Sister Erica in the name of Jesus. Father, we'll continue to entrust in, into you. Our brothers and sisters who are going through difficult times in their finances. For those who are in the situations, Lord, of who are looking for jobs. Lord, we pray for your provision, O Lord. And even for those brothers and sisters who have their concerns in regards to their relationship with their families, with friends, and with colleagues, and even in the, in the church, Lord, as a whole. Father, we lift this up to you, O God, that you are going to restore these relationships in the name of Jesus. Father, we continue to entrust to you the rest of this hour and everything that we are going to do and we are going to say. It will be for your glory and your honor. For this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Belated Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone. Okay, prakpakan po natin ating Panginoon. Amen. So, very important announcement for today. As we are all aware that the UA government has changed the weekend to Saturday and Sunday. So, please note that our worship service will be every Sunday. So, this coming 2022, the first worship service will be on the 9th of January. Timing will be 11.30 to 1.30. For physical attendees, the gate is open at 11. 11.15. So please do inform our Zoom attendees about these changes. And 
As you've noticed in the past worship uh, services, you saw couples standing here physically ministering to each one of us. But unfortunately, due to the increased COVID cases, our Paulino couple cannot join us physically here or even via Zoom because sad to inform that Sister Cheryl is diagnosed as COVID positive today morning. Same as with our Robley couple, they are both ready to minister to us with, in our Titan offering, but Sister Saul is not feeling well, so we just opted to have them joining us, ministering us through our via Zoom service. So I will just take I just want to take this a chance to remind all of us to please be careful, take all precautionary measures while going outside to protect yourselves and to protect your family. So again, a happy new year and God bless us all for this year 2020. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Iba pala ako mag-message. So it is my honor, it is in it's also my delight to present to you brothers and sisters in the Lord our new set of deacons and deaconess and we will have our elders of this church. Amen po ba? Excited po ba tayong lahat of all of the Lord is doing in this church? Brothers and sisters, we are going to call our brothers who respond and brothers and sisters who responded on the call of God. Amen. For them to move up in the service that they are doing in this local church. So may I now please call Brother John Lansang. Amen. Brother Freddy Tria. Sister Agnes Matigo. Sister Michelle Gonzalez. So these are our Deacon and Deaconess. Praise the Lord. And we will now call our elder, Kuya Alan. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, tuwan tuwa po ako, no? I mean, I know and I believe that all of us are also glad that we have now our brothers and sisters responded on the call of God. So let us all pray and also we request you to just lay up your hands to them and just, just speak from where you are. Just pray for where you are. Heavenly Father, we continue, Lord, to honor you and praise you, Lord God, in the life of our brothers and sisters who are standing right in front, Lord. Father, we continue to live unto you each and every individual along with their families and along, Lord God, with the circle of their relatives and friends that they will be continue lord god to display your testimony o lord upon their lives and it's also our prayer as they continue to minister in this wonderful local church whom you have set them father it is our prayer that you will continue to guide them that you continue to encourage them that you continue to strengthen them and that you continue to protect them O lord in the name of Jesus. Father, we continue, Lord, to lift them up to you. And we as a church, as a congregation, that we will continue to submit ourselves unto their leadership. We continue, O oh God, to honor you and praise you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning din po yung mga nasa Zoom. Um, allow us to read our passage for our tithes and offering from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 10. 
bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are abundant God, and out of our great mercy, you have given us so much. Father, please accept our tithes and offering as a gift of worship to you, O God, and use it for your kingdom and glory. May these gifts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Thank you, O God, only by your grace that you really allow us to be a cheerful giver. Thank you, Father God, that even, that even give us the privilege to help others and privilege to trust you and give back to you what belongs to you, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you promise us that you will provide us everything that we need. Thank you, Lord Jesus, everything we entrust to you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. Alam ko pong malamig sa labas, kaya medyo nakakompress kayo ng konti. Amen. So praise the Lord that uh, He enabled us to still be here kahit po hindi... I mean, kahit may ulan po sa labas. Amen. Praise God. My Win Sharjah family, have a happy and prosperous New Year to all of us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe we didn't still greet each other. Can we have a very short time just to say happy New Year to everyone? Amen. Praise the Lord. So let us now go to the message of the Lord this morning. Amen. Are we all ready? Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. It's the end of 2021. So it's still God is good. Amen. Puba. And I will not be tired telling you the same thing tomorrow, that is still God is good. Amen. So part of the introduction is that I would know and I believe that everyone here is with me when we say about New Year, that every year all of us believes that it brings hope to everyone. Even you ask the news in the Philippines, kahit anong kalamidad ang tumama, they are still looking forward that the next year brings hope. And this time around, it is a very hopeful season. I mean, look at us. We just finished our Christmas celebration. And I know that all of us have a wonderful time last night, last Friday night. Amen, Fuba. Amen. And many of us are with those, with the families. We enjoy our fellowship. And for those who are still single, I know that you enjoy yourself. <laughs> Amen. We had a lot of brothers and sisters who have shared in their, in their Facebook account, in their social medias, what they had on that last Friday night. Amen. So nandun, nakita natin yung mga handa. Pinag-pray niyo po ba <laughs> ang inyong mga handa bago kayo kumain? <laughs> Amen. So I know that all of our families, where you are in your care group, that we all have a great time. And also our family had a wonderful opportunity 
to have our uh, sister Tere and sister Dang the household for their house dedication and such a wonderful opportunity for us to be there especially lahat kami or may isa sa amin no taga Mindoro kami so we feel at home <laughs> Praise the Lord. And the highlight of that is on the table, which is yung chicken, yung baked chicken, okay, ni Sister Tere. Sister Tere, it was a nice uh, baked chicken. It still tastes chicken. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what I mean, brothers and sisters, is that that everyone here right now, since we just had this very a short gap from our last uh, Christmas celebrations, what I mean right now is that all of us were thinking of spiritual things. All of us are thinking about changes, that there is something that we want to have a new focus, a new mindset. We want to bring some new things into our lives as we set our goals in the new year 2022. And what would happen is that we want to focus because we believe that that next year, which is going to happen, just like Brother Don is saying, in the next less than 12 hours, which is tonight, would be different than it is today. So we are setting now things, new focus new things into our life because we believe that tomorrow will be different and so brothers and sisters it is i know and i believe that it is good that we should have this kind of attitude of newness and freshness we have to cultivate such kind of attitude and for that, our message today, I entitled, God, what's next? What's next? Have you asked this question? Somehow, when you were pondering, Lord, what's next? Okay, this happened, and after that, what's next? So our text today is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, from verse 16 to 17. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. And if you have your Bible with you, please read along with me. It says here, No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will fall away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do men pour new wine into old wine skin? If they do, the skins will verse, the wine will run out, and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into a new wine skins, and both are preserved. Blessed be the reading of God's word. Let us all pray. Father, we just want to thank you once again for everything that you have done. And as we are here right now in this wonderful time in listening unto the word, Father, it is our prayer that you are going to teach us, O oh Lord, that something that we could carry as we pace the new year 2022. Father, we just ask that you will open our hearts, our minds, that our ears, that we could just simply, O oh Lord God, grab the message that you want us to know and that you want us to hear. May your name be glorified and be honored. As we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. So praise the Lord. So here in Matthew, we can see that the context where the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking is when the Pharisees and John's disciple ask him why they are not fasting. Okay? And if you go backward, it was there where Matthew were converted. 
It is where God called Matthew the tax collector. Or in other gospel, you will see the name Levi. Okay, because this is parallel. Now, before we go to that very message, to that very context, we know that New Year's resolutions is everywhere. It's all around us. Because if we are just going to watch the television and if we are just going to hear people around us, we know that New Year's resolutions are everywhere. People would think that if they would flip the calendar tomorrow, they would have a brand new body. They would have a brand new mind. They would have a brand new attitude. They would have or they would stop their old habits and they would stop this addiction. So these are part of those New Year's resolutions that everyone would believe that as they flip the calendar, voila, here you go. Here it is. And you know what, brothers and sisters, according to the survey, the majority, the number one resolution is this, diet. <laughs> Everyone wants to have a different body than before. But the problem is that you want to eat the same amount of food that you were eating. Diba? And yet you want to have a different body. Well, for sure it will change from small to medium. But according to the survey, by January 5, all of this would stop. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> you are getting hard time not eating for four days. And then suddenly the following day, the last I give up, <laughs> I cannot do this. So on January 5th, everyone stop. And you know what, brothers and sisters, why this is happening? Because we as a human being, we are a routine people. Ibig sabihin, making a change would be very challenging for every one of us. Especially, we are expecting some changes. We are expecting that there's a change, that something is different that is going to happen to us. Without us doing nothing different, Gusto nating magbago, but we are not doing any changes on what we are doing. So it's the same. It's same, same. It's the same old year. And the number 10, according to the survey, the resolution that most of the people would say is this. Spiritual things. Okay, let me put this, they put it in this way, that I am going to be a more spiritual person in this new year 2022. And you know what? From Saturday morning, which is tomorrow, I am going to read more of my Bible. I am going to pray more, and that makes me more spiritual person. And you now have all this exaggerated list of spiritual discipline that you want to work on in your life. And again, on January 5, you have taken a more reading from four days, you did a more prayer, and there's nothing changed in your life. Because, brothers and sisters, we are a routine people. You would say, oh, I still have a job to do. I have a work 
to be attend and I have some people around me. So I don't have now time to read my Bible. I don't have now time to pray. Because you are not considering those factors when you did all those resolutions. And so again, it's an old years in an old the same year and you stop everything just like the diet it seems that it is meaningless it seems that nothing happens and do you know brothers and sisters that it is possible to practice forms of faith and yet entirely disconnected with god what i am saying you can read your bible you can pray, you can attend the Friday service, which is next year, it will be Sunday. You can attend the Bible study, and yet there's nothing changed in your life. It is possible that you do all those forms of faith and practices and activities, and yet there is nothing that changes in you. Nothing happens to you. Now notice in the context of the text that we had this morning as i have told you the lord jesus christ were talking to a very religious people at that time you know the piracy one of my teacher in alain told me the piracy if you will if they will hand you a script it was a scroll and you are going to pin a needle anywhere on that scroll they would know which letter would hit. So what I mean, brothers and sisters, is that in regards to their Bible reading, in regards to the Bible packs, they are the experts. They know the, scripts, the scriptures well. And they're all well disciplined in regards to all of this. But even though that they are very well disciplined people, they are unchanged people and they are unspiritual people. How do we say that? Because they are being disconnected from what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing at that particular time. So how do we say this? Because even though that they are a very well disciplined people and they know the prophecy about the coming messiah exactly every word and yet the messiah is right in front of them but instead of acknowledging him what they did they hate him brothers and sisters friends and visitors if we have or for those who are going to watch later you might have a list of all of these spiritual disciplines or activities that you want to do in the coming year 2022 but without the right attitude nothing is going to change it will profit you nothing because above all it should change the very core of our being you remember this from our lesson last tuesday from pastor nick about coaching and mentoring that one in the middle who you really are has to be changed and that is what god created in each every individual that inner core amen so there is a two just simple points that i want to share this afternoon about this text that we have just read and the number one is this patching okay many are familiar here about patches and many of our brothers and sisters would love even to wear clothes with patches so patching so what the lord jesus christ showed them the problem with this it says in matthew chapter 9 verse 6 our text that no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth 
on an old garment. For the patch will fall away from the garment, making the tear worse. Now to mind you, this is parallel to Mark and Luke. Okay, and we can read that in the book of Luke, Dr. Luke mentioned that this is a parable. The Lord Jesus Christ responded to the people, to the Pharisees, in this way, in a parable. And so we know that this is a parable. And when we know it is parable, it means that there is something mean. There is a heavenly meaning about this. There is something that beyond this literal meaning. Now, let me explain to you this well-known truth. So what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying here is that you cannot take a new cloth and patch it to the old cloth. Because if you do that, what would happen with this cloth that you patch? Okay? This unshrunk cloth, the new cloth, when you stitch it on that old cloth, now kapag nabasa, when this cloth has been wet, pag nilabahan, it will shrunk and it will give tension to the old cloth and that would break the old cloth. And the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, no one do this. Okay? And this people knows it well. Maybe this time we don't know, ah, okay, maybe this time I know now that this the lord jesus christ was saying is really true because in that particular time people his healers knows what the lord jesus christ is saying so that is the picture that the lord jesus christ is telling to these people and even to us with regards to the problem with patching now let us let us now look into ourselves brothers and sisters this is what happened we develop an attitude of patching that we want to apply our faith only to certain areas of our life. So what we are doing is that, Lord, next year, 2022, we want only certain areas of our life that we want to work on. And that is what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying patching that we want god to change us in some areas of our lives and we don't want god to change us from other areas of our lives where there is an ungodliness where there is a corruption we know that what we are doing is wrong we know that what we are doing is sin and we don't want god to touch those areas of our life and lord just work on on those parts which I have mentioned. If I will be in the wrong relationship right now, Lord, please don't touch it. Just touch only those areas which I want to change. You just want to work with few areas and there is a problem with that. And you know what is the problem? Brothers and sisters, we begin to measure now our faith our maturity by those patches and look what happened we are showing now our patches to the people we are saying you know i am now reading my bible more than before i'm reading now 20 minutes a day so here is my patches i am attending now the friday service here is another patches I am now committed to attend my Bible studies. Now here is my patches. And so what happened, brothers and sisters, that I am doing this and I am doing that and these are all my patches. And what we are doing is we are showing it to the people. We are walking around showing all those patches to them. And now do you think that those patches could repair your spiritual life? Absolutely no. You are just doing a repair. You are just doing some patching. And that is not enough. What enough, brothers and sisters, is the regeneration, which only God can do. 
Because it is only God who can change you. It is only God who can change us. It is something that only God can do. So everything about us needs to be changed. Amen? Everything about us needs to be changed we cannot set boundaries before god saying lord this is my family please work out on this lord this is my job please don't work out on that lord this is my recreation don't work out on that lord this is my hobby don't work out on that lord this is the minist my ministry oh please work out on this area lord this is my job please don't touch it we are setting boundaries and what we are doing is we are putting all those patches and what we are focusing is to work only on those areas and not all in our life all of us in our whole being must be changed now let me give you an example brother paul he himself has patches and he named it it says here, for it is we who are circumcision, we who worship by the Spirit of God, who glory, of, who glory in Christ Jesus, and who put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, and if anyone else thinks that he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, if anyone here, even I believe up to this very time, Paul can confidently say that I have more. Why? I have been circumcised at the eighth day. Of the people of Israel, I am the, from the tribe of Benjamin. I am a pure Jew. And Hebrews to Hebrews, and in regards to law, as I have mentioned, in regards to law, he said, I am a Pharisee. And you know what Pharisee look like. As for seal, persecuting the church. As for legalistic righteousness, faultless. And yet, in verse 7, but whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. And do you know, brothers and sisters, why he consider all of these patches, all of this achievement as loss? Because he is entirely disconnected from God. It is true that apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, we are nothing. It is very true. Whatever the achievements you have, those are just patches. And those are not enough. So we need Christ. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with righteousness of salvation. For he had clothed me with garments, with robe of righteousness. And brothers and sisters, that is what we need. We cannot go in the new year 2022 asking God for the patches. Because the idea here is that the Lord God had put on us a new garments, a robe of righteousness. Because Christian faith is all about the Lord Jesus Christ changing all of us. Tayo po bilang mga Kristiyano, it's all about Jesus Christ changing all of us. Not by patches. And when that happens, your Bible reading, your worship attendance, your prayer, your time of Bible studies, these are becomes part of your life. It becomes your attitude. It becomes your lifestyle. And it is not a 
a New Year's resolution. Amen? So what's next? Preserving. It says here that the Lord Jesus Christ showed them this problem with preserving. And he says that in verse 17, neither do men for new wine into old wine is skin. Because if they do, the skins will verse. And the wine will run out and the wine skins will be ruined. No one pour new wine into wine. They pour new wine into new wine skin and both are preserved. Now, if we are going back into the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy, when Moses described the land of Israel, he said that this land has a springs of water. And he specifically mentioned seven crops that grows in that land of Israel. Okay, these are wheat, they are barleys, the, not barney po, barleys, <laughs> barley, okay, there are vines, there are fig trees, there are pomegranates, there are olive oils, and this is honey. Now notice, it was mentioned that there is vines, and yes, if you look in Israel up to today, they are full of vines everywhere and the significance of vines in the old testament and even the new testament the lord jesus christ was using this as an, an analogy in this cry in this saying that jesus says that i am the vine and you are the branches and there are so many use in regards to this vine we may eat it as fresh and some dried them and for some they make it as wine and that is what we are going to explain this morning. Now, I know that none of us are, maybe, maybe some here are familiar with wine skin. Is there anyone who has a wine skin in their home? <laughs> Mayroon po ba dito nagtatago ng wine skin? Okay, wine skin to nowadays that will cost you 100 dirhams, but that is not a pure leather. There is a plastic inside that holds the water or wine. Okay, but this old, but this wine skin that we are talking about is really a pure skin, a pure leather. And maybe none of us are able, even the oldest, if we are going to us, don't look to them. <laughs> Don't look to them, okay? <laughs> they even don't know what is wine skin. I'm not looking to anyone, okay? Now, wine making is different before than it is today. So here is the illustration, brothers and sisters, that what the Lord Jesus Christ is talking about here. In the time of Jesus, people are very expert in the making of wine they know it well they know that the wine increase okay yung kanyang gases di ba may reaction yun sa loob because of the fermentation i'm not an expert i just researched it again you go to google and type it and you will see this because yung, yung gas that is formed inside the new wine skin, and this wine skin has the capacity to extend. Now, all the leathers has the capacity to extend. And all leathers, you can extend it only one time. So, ibig sabihin, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, no one puts a new wine into the old wine skin. Because if that happens, if you put the new wine, then there is now the reaction inside this old wine skin. And since this old wine skin cannot be extended anymore, and the gases that is now inside this bag, this wine skin, has no way to go out. And so what would happen? It will burst. Okay? It is going to verse because this old wine skin cannot hold it anymore and so jesus is saying here is that no one would do that 
Okay? Even the people at that time who was hearing him, okay, knows what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying, although it doesn't explain to them by science before how it happened, but they know what they are doing. No one is doing that. Okay? The Lord Jesus Christ is not telling them about Samsung, about iPhone, about 5G, that no one will know that time. He is talking about the current, the contemporary. Okay, it means they, are, they, are all, they all understand what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to them. So it means that the wine, which is the gospel, he is now the application. The wine, the new wine, which is the gospel, cannot be put into the wine skin of his healers in that particular time. The old wine skin. The wine of the kingdom of God, which is the new wine that Jesus is telling them has life. And for them, they cannot contain this. They cannot just to be put in the old wine skin. Because the teachings and their customs of the Pharisee, if you are going to mix the gospel to that customs and teachings that is not going to work. It is going to verse. It is going to distort. So what it means to us today, it means brothers and sisters that the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is alive. It has a life and it required a brand new wine skin to be shaped in. So you and I cannot have our own ideology. You and I cannot have our own word view, your own ideas, your own principles in life. Cannot have them all and adding the gospel, adding Jesus Christ on those lists won't work because the kingdom of God is not an adds-on into our life. But instead, the gospel must be the shaper of all our ideas. Whatever life pursuit that you have in regards to your wealth, in regards to your career, whatever ideas that you have, the gospel must be the shaper of it. Okay, now let us move forward. So what we need today is not only the new wine, but also we need a new wine skin. And that is us. That is each, every individual. Not only that we need the new wine, which is the gospel, we also need a new wine skin. Because that is the inner core of who really we are. And that inner core has to be new. You know the problem with the people? It's not their attitude. It's not their behavior. The problem is here. And this has to be changed. And God's solution to that was not going to just have some repair, to just have some patches. What God's solution to that is to provide a brand new heart for each and every one of us. Now, just to illustrate this very quick, brothers and sisters, I have brought here, thank you for my wife, I didn't tell her that I need now this bottle water. Imagine that this water inside is so dirty. How are you going to have a clean water? By adding a clean water to it, would it be clean or still remain dirty? It still remain dirty. 
Now, there are two options on it, whether you have to throw all those dirty water, clean this bottle, and pour a new one. Or what the Lord God had did is he gave us a new bottle, a new wine skin that is ready to be shaped with this new wine. And that is us. What Paul is saying is this. In Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I, remo I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. So brothers and sisters, when the Lord Jesus Christ came, people don't need to have a new teachings. People don't need to have a new system of belief. People don't need a new moral conduct that they need to follow. What everyone's need is to have a new heart. And we didn't just need the gospel. Not only that we need the, 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 the good news, but we also need the new vessel that is capable of containing it. That is capable to be reshaped by it. What Paul is saying in 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Diba? Behold, the old has gone and the new has come. So what this means to you and to me, brothers and sisters, it means that the gospel has to be the primary, has to be the main chief of who we are inside. It has to be a shaper. And we cannot allow other beliefs and ideas to shape, to shape the gospel. But instead, it is a reverse. We should allow the gospel, that new wine, to be the very thing that shape our life. Amen po ba? Can I hear amen? amen? And now for the conclusion. It was opened in the same scripture reading by our wonderful couple, Sister Chato and Brother Fiji, and I'm going to close in the same passage. It says in verse 12, Not that I have already obtained all of this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward what is ahead. I pressed on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us who are mature should take such a view of things. And if one some if, and if one some point of view think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained. So what brothers in say brothers in say is that what Paul is saying is that everything that he does, he is connected with God. So the Bible reading, the prayer, the missions that he did, and even up to this time, if you will let Paul to live up to this time, he would have shared the gospel half of this population of this word. That he is Paul. But what he is saying that all of this spiritual discipline 
has been motivated by not what I am doing, but by who, which is God. He is saying that I don't need my own patches and old garments, but what I need is the righteousness of Christ. So it is like saying to all of us, God, here is my life, not an old white skin, but a new white skin, a life that is flexible. And God, you may use it. God, you may continue to reshape it and you mold it. Amen? So instead of us saying that, Lord, I know that yesterday was great. Last year, 2021, was wonderful in my life and it is awesome. I had a lot of experiences and I know that you are with me. But I want to see, Lord, what is going to happen in the coming year. And Lord, I am ready. So you continue to change me, the whole me of who really I am and not those patches, not with old garments, not with old wine skin. Amen. So as we say, Lord, what is next? Lord, what is next? Amen. Good afternoon to everyone and once again po happy new year. Let us all pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we continue, Lord, to thank you for meeting us today in this wonderful time that we have. Father, we continue to honor you in hearing your word and ultimately in obeying what we have just heard this morning, this day, this afternoon. Father, we continue to entrust to you every brothers and sisters of mine who are with us here and who are by us home, that, that we may continue to live a life worthy of your call. We continue, Lord, to honor you in praise you in the rest of this day and that your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let us now raise our hand for the benediction. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. And may your Holy Spirit, your soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So good afternoon po and God bless everyone.